I'd like to call this a meeting order, this budget committee meeting to order, and start with the acknowledgement of the traditional lands. The land upon which we work, live, and sustain ourselves is the ancestral and treaty lands of the Michizagig and Nishinaabe, also known today as the Mississaugas of the Credit, the rightful caretakers and title holders of this land. We also recognize the rich pre-contact history and relationships, which include the Anishinaabe and the Ongwe Hongwe. Since European contact, this land continues to be home to indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. As responsible community members, we value the diversity, dignity, and worth of all people. Colonialism displaced and dispossessed indigenous peoples of their ancestral land. And continues to deny their basic human rights, dignities, and freedoms. We are committed to learning true history to reconcile, make reparations, and fulfill our treaty obligations to the original peoples and our collective responsibilities to the land, water, animals, and each other for future generations. Great, thank you. Uh, we'll move to the next item, approval of the agenda. Do I have someone who put this on the floor? Trustee Davies, seconded by Trustee Pomoli. All those in favor of the agenda approval, so pass. Now we'll look at uh, declarations of conflict of interest. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none here locally and online, then, uh, all right. I've seen there's no uh, declarations of conflict of interest. We'll move on to our staff reports, and we're going to move to 5.1, the public consultation survey review of 2023 presented by uh, Tiffany Gooch. Uh, good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, as you know, traditionally, we offer an opportunity for uh, staff, uh, families, students, and community members uh, to participate in a survey that is run um, uh, simultaneous to this to provide input into the budget process. Um, I will note that traditionally this has been carried out by the Public Engagement and Communications Department, but this year the Research Department as well assisted with the survey um, and the survey analysis. And so this is a verbal report, so uh, um, there's a slide deck that I'll be showing um, that will have the information for you up top here. So first of all, uh, we had a survey that went live on May 17th and closed on May 23rd at 5 p.m. Um, it was posted on the Peel Schools website, uh, school website, social and shared through social media uh, from May 17th on. Um, it was also uh, shared with all staff by email and all families by email. And as uh, you'll see on the screen here, it might be a little difficult to read, but um, that we are currently sharing the information with you. And there's a formal opportunity as well for uh, delegations at your June 1st um, committee meeting if there's further feedback folks would like to bring. So the next piece for us uh, was uh, uh, who was responding. Um, so about 59% of our respondents were Peel employees. 26% um, of them were Peel parents and guardians. 10% uh, were Peel students. 2% um, were Peel school council members. And another 2% were residents of the Peel region. Under the 1% area, there's some additional other responses. And I'll just note um, school, uh, uh, Peel school council members uh, have uh, uh, um, taken a part of this survey as well as uh, some community organizations um, and unions as well. Uh, so the survey itself was broken out uh, between a set of questions and the first question was what do you see as the budget priority areas for the Peel District School Board for the 2022-2023 school year? Um, uh, and so this included uh, what was brought up was for special education, um, early reading, uh, mental health and well-being, and student safety and math uh, were uh, the themes that we saw across the top in this uh, in this question. Um, I will note that there was also staff hiring as an additional uh, suggestion that was maybe under the one percent. Um, and I'll also note as I go through these slides for the um, the specific questions. Um, we did have um, uh, multiple things that people could uh, select, so you'll see it will amount to more than 100%. Um, people didn't have to choose only one section. Um, they were able to uh, choose multiple items as their priorities. 
Um, the next question uh, was which of the following supports for student academic achievement specifically should the PBSB be prioritizing in our budget process? Um, special education again came up top. Um, early reading was identified. Um, mental health and well being, student safety, and math. And then under the 1% was uh, staff hiring and retention was brought up. Um, in question three, there was uh, which of the following supports of students and staff? Um, equity and inclusion should be uh, uh, PDSB priorities. Um, this uh, uh, was overwhelmingly supported around mental health and well-being uh, through this work. Um, that uh, the cross-section between that and special education needed to be prioritized. Um, student safety and then our work and uh, how we're financing our human rights and inclusion um, departments. Um, staff hiring and retention came up as well, as well as um, supporting um, any student needs. Um, in our question four, uh, we had which of the following supports. Um, so just, no. just pause. Yep. So can we just pause? Oh, sure. Yes. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can we just see the slide for question three just for a minute? Yeah. Sorry, just an update. Thank you. Okay. Um, question four was which of the following supports for students and staff safety uh, and mental health um, should be prioritized in the budget process. And uh, again, mental health and well-being, uh, student safety, special education, human rights and inclusion got the sort of top responses. Um, but behavior accountability action um, was uh, suggested as well. And behavior management training and staff crisis support was brought up. For question five, we had which of the following supports for school revitalization and improvement should be prioritized? Um, and overwhelmingly, of course, just capital infrastructure, um, but sustainable infrastructure um, got the second most uh, responses <coughs> here as well. Um, and then again, noting health and safety, blocking procedures, climate control and air filtration. And I'll note climate control for most of these responses was air conditioning for schools, and this came up across all of the questions as well in any of the writing areas. Um, and uh, again, I think you can see here sort of bigger budget for classroom furnishings and recycling awareness, which I know we're quite aware of. <coughs> Question six was for 21 century learning skills uh, needed to succeed in a changing global economy. Um, according to the PBSB budgeting priorities, which of the following skills do you feel are important for students to gain in their schooling? Um, and folks uh, made mention of critical thinking, um, communications, problem solving, self management, and collaboration to be their priorities in the current um, uh, learning environments. And so we do have space for folks to um, add in any other information that they just thought was important for us to have. And so the hiring of occasional teachers uh, came up, um, hiring of specialized staff. Um, uh, and then again, just staff resources was a continuous theme that we saw throughout. Um, fixing the school yards and uh, providing more shaded areas for students was brought up. Um, and uh, again, support for ESL and, and uh, all things related to um, language learning. Um, but we'll reinforce that across the entirety of the um, uh, um, of the survey, um, most of the um, responses that folks were bringing forward also included um, something related to climate control for schools as to the time that we happen to be in right now as it gets warmer. Um, very happy to answer questions around anything else we may have seen through the survey process or our improvement to the survey going forward as we continue to work with research um, to make sure that this works well um, with the timelines of the budget process. Thank you. Uh, so, first of all, let's put this on the floor so we can have a conversation. Next question is uh, Trustee Pomoli, seconded by Trustee Davies. Do I have any questions or comments uh, through our communication director, uh, Gooch? Yes, uh, Trustee uh, Sat Hall, or Joe Hall. Thank you. I was uh, just wondering about. Could you uh, put your mic on? Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. <coughs> So 59 percent uh, of the responses came from the PEEL employees. PEEL employees means PDSB employees? Yes, P sorry, PDSB employees, we should have noted there. Oh. Yes. So in the last slide, I see fixed school yards and uh, provide shaded areas. So shaded areas means like 
only for students or students. for the parents and grandparents too? Yeah, I think that that was a re in reference to students having shaded areas. A lot of what we saw throughout the survey was related to students um, having cool places to cool off on very hot days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because a lot of parents, grandparents are also contacting us when when they go to drop and pick their kids, and they have no place when the weather is weird, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's hot, windy, snowy. Uh, so that's why they are looking for some kind of accommodation if we can. That's why it was interested if, uh, okay. that is included. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, trustee Jay, please. Through you, Mr. Chair, are these um, member participants typical in as prior years, or are there more people this year or less people responding? So uh, my understanding is the number of participants is uh we had a spike last year so we had more participants last year than we had in previous years this year's respondents brought it back to our normal participation in the um in this survey process and, and through you mr the ratio of staff to parents to students does that seem to be yeah i would say the ratio um is very comparable to last year's but again, um, we send it out to all staff at a moment that they, in that moment, would go in and do the survey. Um, for parents, they might be receiving it sort of just the time in their lives and getting back to it when they have an opportunity. So we'll also take note for um, the timeliness for when we're sharing it for people to be able to fill out immediately or you know, real time. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I have two people online. so. Uh, let's start at the top here, uh, Trustee Cameron. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, the question I have is with respect to um, the mental health supports that uh, receive, have received um, significant responses. I'm um, not sure, I, perhaps I missed it, but it, it, was there a breakdown as to whether those supports were being requested for students or for staff? or for both? So I'll respond here and say, no, there hasn't been a breakdown necessarily to, for differentiating between staff and student mental health and well-being. I think that the responses were in response to general mental and uh, um, state mental health and well-being for the entirety of the PDSB community. Although, um, when it, with regard to safety, those conversations were, um, sorry, those responses were uh, differentiated, and I would say very specifically student safety or um, ensuring that staff have the support necessary to ensure that they're they're safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to uh, Trustee uh, McDonald online. Thank you, <coughs> Chair. I was just wondering for question six under the 21st century learning, you had about five different areas and it added up to about 34%. I kind of quickly did the math. There's around 34%. So I was just wondering out of curiosity, um, like how many different skills? I thought those numbers are low. Like I thought it was yes. higher. Very happy to speak to that. There were a lot of skills that were brought up here, so that's why uh, any oh. other ones would have come under the one percent. So I'll name them here if that's helpful to you. Um, so I know we mentioned critical thinking, communication, problem solving, self management, and social responsibility. Um, but also some others that would have would should have made it onto the slide, but we didn't want to get too cluttered. Um, would be creativity. Social responsibility, productivity and accountability, initiative and self direction, flexibility and adaptability, uh, and literacy. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate no it. No problem. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to uh, Trustee Clark online. Yep. Uh, yep, my mic's off. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, the question, uh, the response to the questions, did uh, did the respondents respond to all of the questions or was there a discrepancy, you know, wh where somebody, you know, they chose to answer one group of questions, but not the other? It's a good 
question. I do not have the answer to that on hand okay. right now. Um, we didn't get any data back from research that said that we had a lot of people that were abandoning the survey and didn't complete it all the way through. So I'll tell you anecdotally, my understanding is that most completed the survey. Yeah. Um, however, um, I can get uh, further information to be brought back yeah. as to uh, what the completion rate was for uh, those that completed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, Trustee McDonald, you still have your hand raised. Do you have another question or? No, sorry, it's a legacy hand. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you. So, uh, not seeing any more questions here. Uh, all those in favor of receiving this oral report? Pass. Okay, we'll move on to 5.2. So, we're going to have a business case discussion. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Associate uh, Director Jess Holliger. Sure. So th thank you, uh, Chair. <clears throat> so uh, I'm hoping that, that all of you have a copy of, of, of the business case summary uh, that, that I just want to walk you through it and then provide some explanation in regards to uh, some of the funding that is is available to, 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 to if if some of those business cases get approved. So in this summary sheet, uh, I'm just going to go page by page uh, in there. Uh, so if you look at look at the, the, the different columns, so so we of course we have the business case number, then then the title of of, of the project or the business case. Then if there is a, any FTE uh, attached to that business case, that's the next call. And then the, whether the ask is a multi-year ask uh, or is it a one-time ask. So there's a different, and sometimes a business case may have a, a two uh, multi-year ask along with a one-time ask. The next column is SSF. So that what that is, is a student support funds. So, uh, <coughs> The, the, the board does, I mean, all boards do get SSF funding. Uh, overall, we do have uh, approximately $15 million that, that we get as, as part of the SSF funding. So where a business case qualifies for SSF funding, we have included along with that in that column, the amount of funding that qualifies for the business case. In case the business case gets approved, we will use that SSF funding uh, for that. There are restrictions on, on the SSF funding. We cannot, we cannot simply use it. it. It is attached to the different applied groups. And most of the, 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 the business cases where we have attached is, is related to additional uh, teachers we, that, 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 that the business case is not asking for. Except in one of the special education cases, uh, I'll talk, well, when I go down, I'll mention that. And that's where CF, CYC is. Those, those are the ones. Uh, which uh, are part of the OPSU group, and that's the only one. Otherwise, uh, all the other assets of funding need to be used for, for additional teachers. Just, just trying to try for that. And then the next column is PPF. That's the, 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 the partnership and priority funding. Again, uh, the ministry has very strict guidelines of how this, this funding can be used. So that's why we have, again, we have identified the business cases where that funding can be used, it cannot be, in fact, it cannot be used for anything else. So those are the only business cases where that through this, this funding will be used. Both SSF and PPF funding, it is year to year. So it's only if, if the business case get approved, they are only, the funding is only available for, 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 for each year. And then the, the next problem is ANGLUT. So what happens with that, I mean, each year what ministry is doing, uh, they are enveloping different grants. So what that does is uh, the school boards are not allowed to take funding from that grant and use for something else. So, so it can be only used for that area. So where we have some, uh, some envelope funding, again, we have identified uh, where the, it can be used for, for certain business cases. And the, and the next one is the overall total you know, request for the funding for, for, for each other business cases. Uh, so, so that's that's kind of the, the way this this whole business case summary is, is, is structured. So uh, again, these were the business cases which were presented at, at the last uh, budget department meeting, uh, and 
and they they were available online as well. And and, and so uh, so if I can then then draw your attention to the last page uh, of of that summary. So if you look at it, the, 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 the total FTE request is 326 for, for, for all the business cases requested in there. And then uh, the multi-year request is around 10.8 million and one time is 5.7 SSF funding. So we have in total $8.5 million of SSF funding that we have identified could be used for, for those business cases. Same with PPF, almost around $11.36 million. Again, identify those business cases where it can be used. With IAMPROP, it's mostly in the, in the indigenous area. The overall <coughs> amount is from just over 300000 The overall ask for all the business cases is $36.8 million. <coughs> so if we take out, in case those business cases get approved and we use that set of funding, PPF funding, annual funding, which is um, around just over $20.2 million. So that leaves us with $16.6 million. And if any of those business cases get approved, it has to all come from the board's own research. Because there is no other funding available, it will be the board's research. Actually, the next item will be where we will go over the revenues and expenses. And as well as the summary of where we are without the without including these business cases. So to go in there. So here, what, what I'm saying it is is if any of those business cases get approved, it has to come from, from the board research at that point. So that's that's kind of the summary where we are, and, and that's that's for you, uh, is a, you know, for, for your consideration and then uh, and for, for, for discussion. But I'd be happy to respond to if there are. Any, any questions in regards to the overall business cases? And I believe we do have staff online as well, some of the staff. In any case, there is, a, there is a question on any of the business cases that we will, will try to respond to that so that you have the full information when, when you are discussing your business cases. Thank you. Um, first of all, let's put this on the floor. So can I have someone uh, put it on the floor? I have trustee. Uh, Cameron, I think he's right. Trustee Cameron is on. No, no, Trustee. No, we're all on present, so it's only Trustee Davies. Uh, you want to put it on the floor, and uh, I'll have that seconded by Trustee Pomoli. Um, and uh, now that uh, we have that on the floor, what we'll do is open it up for questions uh, through this. Uh, I, I appreciate all the information now on having the money and then segregated in the various columns and. You know, it's basically what you're saying is it's not 36 million we need to find or to allocate really. Uh, we just need to allocate uh, 20 million or 16, 16, 16 million. 20 million's already got some funding associated with it, so it's not like we're spending money we don't have. Right. Perfect. So uh, I'll start with the questions in, uh, in the room first. Uh, do I have uh, Trustee Davies' hand up? Oh. Through you, Mr. Chair, what is our present reserves and yep. how comfortable are you with the levels that they're at? Sure. Um, so through you, uh, Chair, we, we, we do have two uh, different parts of, of reserves and, and we call them one is appropriated, means the funds have been set aside for different uh, projects, for different uh, tasks and, 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 and for different updates. The one funds that we have, which is not appropriate, I means it's sitting there, it's not being allocated to any anything. And that those funds we have around $86 million at the end of last school year. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, follow-up question. Are those funds that are available, are they in like investments where we will be uh, hurt if we take them out, or is it actually just a free of cash? No, uh, through you, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, no, those funds are available if, if we need to. Uh, we, we, uh, the, as a board, we could use that. Thank you so much. And, and just to let the trustees know, um, the next 5.3 item, we're going to go through the actual budget. We'll see the deficit, we'll see the reserves, and all those kind of stuff. So I, I, would, I would like to just focus more and more questions on the business cases uh, because uh, you know then we can come back to where the money is going to come from in the next item. 
but it's important to understand the ask for the money and, and the allocation and any questions. Obviously, we reviewed in our last board meeting, or sorry, uh, budget meeting, all the business cases in, in, in detail, but now we have the numbers and the allocation of this, this uh, you know, single time, FTE, et cetera, all there for us uh, to make it uh, much understandable. So any other questions here in, in, in person before we go to people online? Seeing none, I'm going to uh, first hand I have up is uh, Trustee Clark. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, I uh, have a question about uh, a pension analyst. Um, what actually does that does that position do? And uh, there's, uh, you know, I probably should have asked these questions uh, last time. But, uh, we have a multi-year cost and then a one-time cost. Could you break down the multi-year cost for this? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Through you, through, through you Chair. Uh, so the pension analyst, uh, I think I, I, I mentioned uh, last time, uh, there's been a change in the owner's legislation, which now require us to offer uh, the ability to join uh, the owner's pension to all non-full-time employees, which is quite significant in terms of volume of employees. Uh, but what a pension analyst does, so, so first of all, obviously there is the enrollment piece, uh, but after that, there is a lot of questions that employees have around their, their potential pension. So we're kind of the go-between between owners and, uh, uh, and the employee as well. Uh, when an employee uh, has a break in service, and again, for casual or non time, there's a lot more breaks in service, potentially, uh, that we would also would have to not only calculate, uh, but also offer them um, potentially uh, days that they could buy, right? So whether or not they ask, we have to offer them. So, so for example, uh, if somebody goes, and that, that now is the case for full-time employees as well. So if somebody goes on uh, maternity leave, on a uh, uh, leave uh, in terms of taking care of a parent, so forth, and there's a break in service, we have to calculate how much uh, days they've lost from a pension perspective and then offer it for them to purchase it. And then we have to facilitate that process. So again, so that also, so the pension analyst, so we already have somebody doing that for um, our full-time employees, uh, but now because the volume is significant, we're not, we, we, we need that in order for our, our uh, non-permanent employees, which uh, I said already, we are at the uh, 1,300 from just the initial enrollment that was just started. Okay, and um, this is uh, this is a service that does not overlap with the service provider service services. Uh, future, no, it doesn't overlap because because again, o Omers is the the pension plan, but the enrollment process uh, really begins with that. So we have to, for example, send files as to the employees that have joined our organization because until we do that, they would not know. The also uh, owners themselves also would not know uh, if there's a break in service. So we have to facilitate that information and provide. That's a weird kind of the conduit between owners and the uh, employee because that information resides with us. Okay, thank you for, for the clarity. I appreciate it. Great. Um, do we have uh, any other questions online? See no hands. Uh, I'm going to ask for a vote of uh, receipt of this oral report on our business cases. All those in favor? It's passed. So uh, we'll move on to the uh, next uh, item. It's item 5.3, and this is where uh, staff would put all the revenues and expenditures together, and I'll pass it over to Associate Director Gill to present the final numbers. Thank you, uh, Chair. Now, oh, actually, I'm going to ask uh, Controller uh, Tessia Charles to, to, to introduce this. Uh, thank you, um, Andrew, you, Chair. Um, could we just go to the third, the last uh, slide, uh, last page? Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to uh, basically go through our revenue and expenses. We will. Um, you have already seen uh, the revenue, but we will start with our expenses. Uh, and other guards that he, our my assistant controller, will go through expenses uh, for us and indicate where we are at, at currently, without some of the approvals that we will be uh, looking at tonight. Thank you, Tanya. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, through you, Chair. 
I'm going to present a summary of operating expenses for the upcoming uh, budget uh, year, 2324. So similar to what you've seen when it comes to revenue, we have the three columns there, which shows the current year's budget, the 22-23, and uh, what we're expecting for next year without the business cases, obviously, for 23-24, and the last column would show the change, which is where I would focus when I go through the different departments to explain why uh, why there has been a change and what caused the change. But before I go through the different departments, I just want to remind ourselves about what has happened from one day to the other. So we do know that from the current year and going to the next, the enrollment has gone down by 2,300 students. So what this means is that the GSN funding has gone down. And accordingly, we at the board will make the enrollment adjustment. So that would happen, and uh, bearing in mind the staff, uh, the class sizes is what, how we make these adjustments. The other thing that happened between uh, between this year and next year is the collective agreements. So we have two collective agreements have been signed: the QP collective agreement and the uh, OCW, which would include uh, uh, OC the, uh, OPSU and uh, TAs, etc. So whatever uh, was agreed in those agreements, those will be reflected in the numbers as they were in the funding as well. So now in terms of the process that we have in PL, uh, what we do is any business cases that were approved one time last year, we would have, we would have to remove them when we start the budget this year. So this is because, you know, because probably because of funding not continuing or just because the expense itself was a one-time expense. So that's how we uh, we would remove it from the current on the next year's budget as a starting point. Uh, the only the other thing that just was mentioned is the envelope. So wherever there was grant that was envelope, like indigenous is a good example. Uh, we know that this money we cannot use for anything else, so we would put the, the budget in that uh, specific department. Um, we've also, uh, the departments have been asked to look at uh, their budget and find efficiencies, which would also be reflected in our numbers tonight. Uh, last but not least is reorg. As you know, there have been a bit of reorg uh, between departments as we try to Streamline and make sure that you know we provide the support that we need in the uh, departments. So um, you would see that in some cases that there have been movements from one area to the other. So that's the big picture. So we can now go through the different departments. So all the aligned items represent the different departments. So the first department is the regional. So the regional is really where all everything, all the expenses directly related to the students is uh, captured. So that would include our teachers, our TAs, ECEs, our principals, vice principals, our office uh, assistant, etc. So, and if you can uh, see that this is 1.5 million dollars, 1.5 billion dollars where our overall operating expense is $1.8 billion. So that area alone represents 80%, close to 80% of the overall budget. So now if we look at the change from one year to the other, we see an increase of $3 million. So that's why the enrollment going down, which we've made adjustment to um, the enrollment adjustment for, for that. Uh, there has been, like I said, because of the collective agreement, increases in salaries. So that would have been reflected in um, in that area. So going to the next one, I'm not going to cover everything, but maybe the biggest one. So directors of education, we do see uh, a decrease. This is only because there has been a movement between the director of education and finance. So there was a sub department of uh, internal audit which has moved to finance. Uh, legal and governance, wherever you see small, um, like, you know, uh, not big changes, that would be mostly because of the salary change that has happened because of the collective agreement. Um, and uh, so under central or, so that would be um, central or, as the name implies, it doesn't belong to any um, 
it's more like the administrative side of the board. We have insurance there, like the bank fees, etc. So, and also what we do here is that if there's any allocation that we haven't um, allocated to the departments yet, that would sit here. So in this case, what the ministry has asked us is for the collective agreements that have been signed, we've already put the increases in the respective departments. But for, let's say, for our teachers and other groups, uh, the ministry has given us in the funding 1.25% increase, but they, they've asked us to put it as a provision, right? So accordingly, against that funding, we have to put the expense, and this is where this expense is sitting. <coughs> Under central. Sorry, I just want to be clear. So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. so that is um, so just so I'm clear, that's provisional spending for the future uh, collective bargaining bargaining agreements. So that's that's in preparation for the agreements that haven't yet been made. Correct. Have not been signed yet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I move on. You can see innovation and research capacities going down, but this is also because there was a reorg budget movement with the leadership area. Uh, and, and move on to equity indigenous education next. That's where you see an increase of 4.4 million. This is where we had this year more envelope funding, like uh, in previous years we had flexibility with some of this funding, but now it's envelopes. So as, as uh, just I also mentioned, this envelope funding will put them under the respective department. Uh, for the secondary <coughs> curriculum, you do see a negative. So this is because uh, there has been a reorg. If you look for like maybe one, two, three, three uh, items down, you see the elementary curriculum being in the positive uh, change. So it's just because of movement between those two, and the net um, the net change is an increase in salary, offset by any business one-time business case that were there before that have been removed. And in those areas, there could be some of the SSM that were already there, but was one time, so they were removed, and you'll see them again in the business case this year. Uh, I can do Con Ed is usually continuing education, is usually based on the enrollment. I'll move on to already done the elementary one. Safe, uh, safe school, that's again uh, um, because of some transfers and uh, just minor change there. Speckhead, we do see Speckhead going down by 5.8 million, but this is mostly because of the SSF. There are a lot of SSF staff in here, and because they were one time, they have been removed, and you see them again in the business cases. And there was also a little bit of transfer to other areas here. Uh, I move on to facilities. So we do see a close to 3 million increase in facilities. And uh, this is mostly from the salary uh, change. So in facilities is where all our QP2544 are. And uh, we do about uh, have about thousands of them. And that's why we see uh, the two years. So the collective agreement is over three years, starting 22-23. So that will be baked in 23-24 for the next year, as well as any benefit changes. And uh, so I can move on to learning technology support services. So here we see an increase of 5 million. So this is because there's one uh, funding which is called broadband. So the broadband is all technology. So that's where the funding is sitting. That was for 2.7 million this year. Uh, we also have the uh, SIS, as you might be aware, the SIS modernization is going on. So there's an annual cost of $2 million, which is there. And uh, the, all this has been offset against uh, any increase in salaries. Uh, transportation. So for transportation, we see a decrease in transportation of $2.7 million because transportation also was a one-time business case. So it has been removed here as a starting point. And you'll see among, uh, among all the business cases for 23-24, you see the new business case going in the new year. 
And there's also in this, uh, in the 2.7 million offset against the business case that is, has been removed, is the funding that we, we got for the driver's retention. That's not actually our, our funds that we have to give uh, back to the operator. So that's 2 million there. And uh, lastly, but not least, we have a public engagement um, communication. So we you see a decrease. We did have the salary increase and uh, also just a transfer from one department to the other. Uh, uh, Trustee Pramola, do you have a question? Uh, there are two hands up online. Sir? I just wanted to let you know, Chair, there are two hands up online. Uh, two online. Yeah, 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 two hands on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Okay, sorry. No, that's okay. Please continue. Okay, thank you. So this would uh, summarize the operating expenses by department. So we can see year over year in total, our expenses going up by 10.4 million. <clears throat> I'm gonna address the bottom part uh, quickly. So the priorities and partnership funds. So those are funds outside the GSM that the ministry uh, gives to board. And those, as just to mention, are very specific as, as what we can do with those funds. So from last year, uh, from this year going to next year, we do see an increase of 8.8 .8 million. So that's mostly because of the reading PPF and the de-streaming. And you'd see those business cases, those um, yeah, business cases, uh, related to that. And uh, so that the, the TCA is just whatever is in the expense that's related to capital is um, just how we uh, we, we um, account for the capital related items. And uh, the operation expenditure related to capital would also include all the capital items that like for instance, if we have uh, interest, on the sum of the borrowing, so all the interest will be reflected in that number, and also if we and all the amortization, right? So whatever capital we don't put in the cost, the whole cost in the year, we amortize over multiple years, and this will be the portion for next year. The score generated funds. So the school generated funds is what happens at our schools, like all those uh, fundraising money, like pizza trips, etc. So from COVID, we have seen a decrease in our school generated funds. It has picked up and last year, uh, we did see a little bit of pickup, but not as much as we thought last year. So we were being a bit more um, conservative here to put it at 25 million, but that's really just money for the schools. So uh, at the board level, we don't have any flexibility with this money. And uh, finally, there's the other expenses netted against revenue. This amount will be on the revenue side as well, so it doesn't have any impact. But like for accounting purposes, we do show it here. So overall, if we take all our expenses, one year to the other, we can see that expenses is uh, 14 million going up. Happy to take any questions. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'll turn it over to questions. Do we have here any in the room? I have questions online, so I'll start with uh, the trustee clerk. Hi there. Um, I just have some questions about two of the line items. Um, uh, in special ed, I'm I'm wondering how losing like five and a half million from that is going. Do we know how that's going to affect uh, special education? And forgive me if these are obvious answers to you guys, but to a lot of more experienced uh, trustees, but. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, so sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, three chair. Uh, so uh, in some of these specific areas, and Speca being one of them, uh, some of the funding uh, relates to very specific types of activity. And so it's tied to enrollment. So as um, kind of enrollment goes down, therefore the need in certain areas goes down. Therefore, the funding will go down as well. Um, in this area, there was specific uh, SSF funding that we allocated staffing for, and SSF funding kind of gets renewed based on the collective agreement. So um, we have uh, looked at the business cases where the SSF we currently parked it, and again, if that gets approved, that will potentially uh, increase this area as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of those, those two elements. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So there's the possibility that okay. some funding will make its way back. 
Uh, yeah, these okay. are expenses. These are expenses, right? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, oh, uh, okay. okay. So we'll be going over the, uh, the, the the revenue side, I assume, after we go through the expenses. So this is uh, items that we, you know, paying for salaries for people, paying for resources, paying for, you know, investment yeah. in uh, uh, capital, et cetera, like uh, vans, you know, et cetera, schools. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I have another hand up. Uh, I'm just trying to identify who it is. Uh, Trustee yes, Alves. Uh, Trustee Alves. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, through you, uh, similar to Trustee Clark's line of questioning, mine is specific to SSF funding. Um, now, I realize I don't sit on this committee, so I wouldn't be able to ask staff to bring a report or answer, but, for, you know, food for thought perhaps for others that are on the committee. But I would like to, to know the breakdown specifically for the 5 million differential um, and then specifically for when we talk about the revenue streams, what, what the amount would be um, like what, the, what what that would offset to, um, but yeah, I would love to know the specifics there. So, um, is that something provided in our uh, associate director Gil? Is that provided in our budget book, or is that to your chair? I just wanted to ask the clarification that, like, so spec it's a spec act or is this? So yeah, so so. There will be uh, details and in, 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 in when we uh, provide more page to page uh, next time and then the trustee for session. But just to add to what uh, controller Tessie mentioned that there were mainly two reasons for that. One is, is obviously the, the, the change in the bit of enrollment and, and, and because of that, that SSF funding, that department feels that they no longer need some of the staff in, in there. It's better to use that funding for other areas. It's, it is being used, but for other areas in, in, in the board. And the other one, the main one was, <clears throat> for the last couple of years, the, the board has been approving 100 LTO EAs. So those get approved only for the year. And the cost of those 100 EAs is, is of more than $5 million. So because they get approved only for EA, for, for one year, so when we start the, the our expenses, we, the staff takes that 100 years out from the budget. But once it's get approved again to the business cases, that funding will get back, added back to it. Because it's only for a year approval, so we only add it for, for, for one year. And and, 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 and and the business cases or anything else which get approved for multi-year, those for that funding gets added on a more on a permanent basis. So those are the main two reasons why there was a decline or change in, 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 in the second funding. Uh, and the expenses. Right, and just as uh, uh, Tracy, so uh, uh, we get a, uh, this is, I'll call it the summary. That, you know, this is the first three pages of the budget book. There are not, when we get the budget book and we go through that, that will be at the next budget committee, I believe. Yeah. Meeting. Yes. That is when we go page by page through 200 pages where we actually get to look at each of the departments and those departments are broken up into everything. So you get to see all the uh, expenses of uh, allocation of, of people, uh, you know, various other capital kind of things and the ongoing operational things. So uh, we, we're, we're just looking at, I'd say, the 30,000 foot view of the first three pages of a 200 page budget book right now. Uh, through you, Chair, thank you for that clarification. So so my uh, question is specific to, um, you know, uh, how do I say this? Um, what we're going without. So just just for the outline of, you know, what what is different and then how we get to that total sum. I, I understand the LTO staff bit and that once we factor that in, that number will change. Um, I would just be curious to know what we're no longer using. If, if that's going to be outlined in the budget book, then I suppose I'd be fine to wait. Um, but but if not, I think that that clarification would be immensely helpful. Right. So what will happen between now and the budget book is we're going to go through the business cases and allocate uh, what uh, we we think is should be in there, if, if anything, and then that will then go align. And so rejuggle these three pages or the expenses page uh, side of things and also the first page. And then individually we'll be able to look at it says, oh, when we go to spec and, uh, and then we go to other things in there talk about EAs. We'll see. Let's say we approve 100 EAs. We'll see that now as a line item that, uh, that's been approved as a budget case and the associated money associated with it. So it's uh, 
it's uh, it's a much more detailed process after we finish tonight. Thank you, Chair. I, I, uh, and through you, sir, I don't I don't mean to delabor the point, but I'm just wondering. Um, I understand your your clarification for what we'll be able to put in, but will we see what has been taken out? Yes. 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 Perfect. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Good. Uh, seeing no more other questions online. Do I have any questions here? So we'll move on to. I'm going to page one. Uh, uh, three no, chairs. We're, we're going to go to page two uh, okay. quickly, um, and that's really just more of a refresher of. Um, I think you, you saw how much our expenses have increased. Um, I think now we're going to go again quickly through sort of our revenue side as a reminder as to where we stand kind of from a revenue perspective. Uh, similar to what uh, Copper mentioned, the key elements obviously impacting it are enrollment, uh, salary increases, and some changes with our uh, priorities and partnership funds. Uh, so uh, similarly, I won't go through every line, but I'm going to highlight the larger ones again. Um, I'm going uh, in this case to go um, to school operations uh, just kind of where things change in the GSN um, and so that was a we did get a about two percent increase on non-staff uh, staffing component um, and my apologies but some of the other ones not saying that they're not significant changes it's, it's just that in those areas uh, when you're looking at uh, for example special education of 200 uh, million you know that the salary changes are you know even though it's about three million a lot that's due to salary changes that's why i'm not covering them but certainly can if anybody has any questions uh transportation allocation again there was a change in the funding framework for transportation um and so we did get seven million uh right now uh but however uh, one thing that was mentioned earlier on in the expense side is we've had to allocate uh really two million off the top because uh, there's a requirement for us to provide um, uh, retention bonuses for the drivers of two thousand dollars a piece and so that's been calculated at two million so right away that we know we have to flow that uh, to uh, the consortium and uh, outside of that again um, there are some other restrictions that we foresee so um, we're still working through uh, the significant detail that's been provided uh, in, in transportation um, the number nine is the supports for student allocation that's, that we mentioned or again about SSF um, as you can see overall the funding hasn't significantly changed year over year uh, however obviously they're they're um, will be salary increases for any staff that are uh, paid out of that. And um, this is allocated by uh, every specific union group. So that's, uh, again, uh, has to be used specifically within each union group as it's been uh, delineated. Uh, number 10 is declining enrollment adjustment. Again, due to our enrollment uh, decline, we are getting 1.5 million uh, this year. Um, and again, that's the ministry's recognition that um, when enrollment changes, uh, boards can't um, sort of pivot quickly in some structural changes. And so they, they do provide some monies uh, through that process. Uh, line 12, the Indigenous Education Allocation. We did get a significant bump here from um, the prior budget. Again, this is a, a change in how we're being funded. Uh, however, this change has very specific criteria. So uh, this is an area where it's been enveloped and actually speaks to, for example, that it can't be used directly in classroom unless the classroom sizes are very small uh, and really it's more uh, in support of the board action plan for Indigenous education. So again, we're working through as to what um, that can be allocated to. Uh, although I think Jess Ball did mention that uh, when you look at the business cases, there are a couple of business cases specific to Indigenous uh, um, um, costs that, that we can, could use it for, but um, there's only a, a couple of items. Um, looking at number 18, uh, this is where we, we did have a significant impact over last year. Um, ministry last year did provide COVID funding and the Learning Recovery Fund. Uh, this year, that piece has been taken away. Uh, I mean, they have provided other pieces in terms of uh, PPF, so learning recovery type of uh, stuff, but not uh, as uh, termed as COVID uh, learning recovery, uh, which is uh, in, in the GSN, so that piece is going away. So if we look at the just GSN on its own, um, overall, there's an increase of, of $6 million. Um, but again, as mentioned, most of that is uh, salary increases, net of enrollment, and, and some few big changes that I've just highlighted. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> just going to the bottom, um, again, uh, this is going to be on the first page. I won't spend a lot of time. Um, I'm just going to call out uh, number 21, which is kind of um, an area that we, we'd like to keep an eye on because that's our only other area where we get revenue outside of the GSN. So, so we're happy when that's going up. And so this is where, uh, and the reason it's going up this year is um, the fact that, again, we're some recovery of our international students. We're expecting about 80 more international students, which will give us about uh, 1.2 million extra. And uh, fortuitous for us as well, interest rates are going up. So we will, uh, we're also anticipating uh, almost 3 million gain in interest uh, income. So, that, so that's uh, positive. Um, and I think that uh, I will, maybe reserve most of the rest of my comments for the summary page, but overall you'll see that the total revenue uh, has gone up by uh, 13.8 million. Um, and then I can kind of break it down a little bit further when we go to the summary page. But I'm happy to take any questions on this page. Great, uh, any questions here? Uh, I don't see any questions online, so we can move to the summary page. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so on the summary page, uh, the summary page uh, is, is a bit of an aggregation of the other two pages. Uh, what you will see uh, under revenue, the first line, uh, if you recall, I mentioned the six million uh, that we've got uh, increase in GSN. So that's the six million there. Um, below that, you will see how um, the uh, areas of partnership fund. So when you look at the, the split on this page, there's revenue there and there's expenses. In some categories, you will see that there's almost a direct offset between where we have revenues and expenses. And that's because, again, for like, example, at PPF, those are very specific funding. So if you look at the expense line, uh, you'll see exactly the same amount in the expense line because we cannot use that funding for anything else. Um, that would be similar for things like school renewal um, and uh, school generated funds. That's what schools generate, same thing if schools uh, bring in money through pizza sales, uh, field trips. Um, we They have to use it for that. So again, um, you will see the same line sort of duplicated both in the revenue expenses. The areas, again, that are different uh, would be, as I mentioned before, the miscellaneous revenue, which is the additional revenue we get to help supplement our operations. Um, and then you'll see that also our capital related expenses won't exactly um, sort of net off. And um, you will see that our uh, capital related expenses are a little bit higher than our revenue, uh, mainly because within that we have some additional capital type of expenses uh, that we have to um, basically account for separately. So for example, in our capital related expenses, we also have our EDC um, interest expense. So EDC is their educational development charges. So we get revenue for that. And you'll see that um, it, it, under revenue of 29 million. So, so every municipality will provide us EDC revenues. Um, this revenue is for purchases of land. So we, we can't sort of uh, use it towards our uh, operating. We have to maintain it separately, um, but we can. Um, um, uh, right now, we are actually spending more on land that we take in. So right now, we have an EDC loan, and because of that, we also have EDC interest. So that's why the EDC interest piece sits in our capital related expenses. So if you were to look at our total revenues against our total expenses. Uh, you will see that um, we we also are adding some um, spec spec ed um, C amount. So that's a special education equipment amount of 1.2 million for 2324. Um, so in cases where the GSN has very specific um, criteria for for um, grants, if we don't use those grants, we have to defer them. And we can use them in future years. So in this case, we did not uh, use all our CIA revenue from uh, prior years. So we're able to bring that forward, and we're anticipating using um, 1.2 million for 23-24. So the reason it's only 1.2 versus we used 1.6 last year is we're actually running out of what we have in deferred. So that's the balance that we will have in deferred, and we're anticipating using it all up in 23-24. So that's uh, contributing to us uh, on the revenue side. So if we take that into account, you will see that our pre preliminary surplus is 8.7 million, um, which is a good start. Uh, but 
from the ministry's perspective, one of the things I did mention is that uh, we do get a significant amount of EDC revenue, and EDC revenue is uh, revenue that we have to set aside for land purchases. So even though our preliminary surplus is 8.7 million, we have to take out all the EDC revenue, net of the uh, interest expense that we have to pay for it, which is uh, 7 million. So we actually have to deduct that, as well as we have to deduct, uh, make an interest adjustment. And it was a bit complicated, but given that, uh, with those deductions, we are actually in a compliance deficit. So what that means is that from the ministry's perspective and from our sort of, uh, profit and loss perspective, we are 18.5 million deficit uh, going into 20, for the 23-24 year. Um, and the reason it's called a compliance deficit is because the ministry um, allows um, or looks at how, how much of a deficit the board has. And within 1%, uh, they, they will approve it without going to the, the minister. So anything above a 1% uh, has to go to ministerial approval. Our 1% is actually 18 million. So us being at 18.5 is basically right at the cusp of uh, 1%. <coughs> And so I think the question earlier, I think through uh, Trustee Davis, was how much we have in our reserves, uh, which is, uh, I think just Bob mentioned, uh, 86 uh, million. Uh, so yes, that is our reserves. However, the ministry does not want any board to deplete their reserves all at once. And that's why they try and put a limit as to what they would want anybody to deplete in any one year. And so basically that's 1%. And if you go above that, you have to get special permission. So, um, and then below that, you will see that even uh, without that, we already uh, are using some of our reserves for board approved capital. And so we've already are using about 2.2 million of our reserves for uh, some capital that we have to, we've already committed to. I'm happy to take any questions on that. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, let's put this on the floor. Uh, can I have someone, uh, Trustee uh, Pamoli, uh, put it on the floor and uh, Trustee uh, Davies second it? Okay, let's start our questions. Um, we have any here? The Trustee Pamoli. So, oh, oh sorry, yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, for you, Chair, um, so as we're beginning this process, we are and I know, like, not kidding, because of course, first of all, thank you so much, because there, I recognize there's an incredible amount of work that has already come to the table. Um, and this is no small effort. This is a lot of work that goes into every every line that's here. So thank you to everyone who has um, prepared all of this and, and gotten this here. Um, I just want to say, so we are, we're already 18.5 million um, behind where we need to be as we're starting this. So we are in a position where we're going to need to figure out a way to make that work as we are going to this process. Uh, to reach us, so the 1% the, the or 18 uh, million deficit, um, we are allowed to be at that level uh, as long as we uh, submit um, uh, a deficit elimination plan to the, the ministry. So that, and most boards do do that and, and, and have done that regularly. Um, so I think that because the ministry does recognize that boards do have reserves and are, um, and again, uh, at some points will want to use their reserves. So I don't think that is necessarily an issue to be around that, that point. Right. And, and, and thank you for the question. And I'll add to that. I, in my 20 years, we haven't submitted a, a deficit, right? Oh, we did? Every year. Um, yes, oh, we three chair, yes, we did. Every year. But we balance it at the end of the year. Yes. How does this work? So, uh, through you, uh, Chair, in, in fact, nearly every year, we, we do have a deficit. And and the way we balance the budget is we use the reserves. Okay. We have done that. We just in the last now couple of years, our deficit has grown. Right. And it has grown. And, and I can talk about the few things why the deficit has gone. But, but, but every year we have gone and we have a deficit and we use uh, to balance that. Because we have to have a balanced budget. Right. The end of the day. So, okay, so we've had a balanced budget, budget right. but we've used reserves to balance right. it. 
And right now we would have to use 18 million in reserve to balance it. Doesn't include any business cases, which is 16 million. And 16 million, would, if we just did that by itself, would mean 16 million would be in deficit. But that would be the first time we would be submitting that, unless we go into more reserves, which we're only allowed to go uh, into a more, uh, well, we can go more, but we have to ask special approval to use that more than 1% to so, cover it and have a plan, if I understand, a plan on which we're going to go uh, next year, how we're going to reduce our, our deficit. Okay? So, so, so you said, just to add to what I mean, that the last few years, uh, as the boards were going through, through, through COVID, uh, ministry did allow automatically that they said, okay, you can use up to 2% of your research. We do not have, you didn't have to go back to the point to work them for asking for the permission. They allowed it, but now starting next year, they have changed that. They have gone back to what it used to be, up to 1%, no problem, you use it. After more than 1%, you go you go back and then ask for, for their approval. And, uh, and uh, I mean, in, in approving that, that, they will ask it, what are the board's plans eventually to, to eliminate that deficit? Great, Trustee Pramal. So can I, Trudy Chair, um, if we have sort of uh, habitually used reserve funds through the years, do those do those funds become replenished over time, or is that something that's sort of a standard thing that happens, or have we found that those reserve funds have diminished over time? I'm not sort of clear on how that works. So um, through through your chair, as it did indicate that we have we have always used used this uh, in the beginning when you when we are uh, coming and 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 setting up the expenditures, they are based on what the staff sees, what will happen, yeah, other than salaries, which are, which are there. But, but there are many projects, there are many initiatives that, that, that the staff feel that they will be, uh, they would like to get it done next year, the following year. But because of various reasons, uh, one reason or the other, either some of the projects or initiatives don't get done. Or there, is, there, there, is, there could be additional funding for the ministry that throughout the year. There, there is always that case. and. And if, if the funding is there, and instead of coming up with a new initiative, if there's a flexibility, we will use on the work that we are already doing some of the funding. So as a result of that, over the years, it could happen that even though we use that, but by the time we finish the year, we in fact have a surplus. Okay. So 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 from 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 when we when we looked at the uh, in a budget approval, which was a deficit. To the year by the time we finish the year, it, it, we have a surplus. Mm -hmm. And we do. We, we, that, that again happens in, in, in November. We come back to the board and we explain to the board what happened throughout the year. If we, if we have now surplus, what that happened? Why we got a surplus? What the what reason rationale behind it? In there. So, and that is the reason actually we have over the years built up that, that surplus. Because it, technically, it, we have a surplus over the years. So, so the, I hope that explains that, that, that what happens from, from the start of the year to, to the end of the year. Yeah. No, I, I just one more question. Please. Okay. Uh, again, through you, Chair. Thank you. That does, that does actually help a lot. Um, I do have one more question, though. So, if we have already, uh, you know, for being the process, we've already hit that, that 1% um, shortfall, what does that mean for that 16 million in business cases? If we would be expected to have to go to the ministry to receive special permission to spend in addition to that 1%, does that mean that we're already in a position where we, we can't approve those 16 million in additional business cases? Okay, well, I'm going to jump in. So the, the process is uh, that we can say we'd like to do the, the business cases conditional on approval from the government that, that we can spend more than the 1%. And whatever percent we spend of that reserve, so it becomes only conditional. And if the government decides not to, then all those those approvals of business cases we want would not happen. Okay. Does, that, does that answer the question? Yeah. No. Thank you, thank you, Chair. If I can just add to that, so what will happen? It we will uh, depending on how much of those business cases get approved. We'll include that in the budget, so that means our deficit will be more than one percent. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we will uh, come to the board still. We will our process will continue. Well, and then once the board approves the budget, uh, it's conditional on approval from the minister as well. In, in most likely, they will ask us more like a deficit removal uh, 
uh, plan, and we will uh, we will definitely submit that. What is our plan to eliminate that deficit over the year? But in case, just in case, there's always a possibility. Uh, chances are chances are not that the case. But in case, technically, if the, if the ministry or the minister comes back. Uh, at that point, the board has the ability either continue with still the business cases, but uh, remove or reduce the funding in other areas. Like we will be back to it and say, okay, the ministry can come in with a one percent. So that means let's say if the ten million dollars is additional, we will have to go back and use our expenditure by ten million dollars. It is not necessarily in that area; it could be in any area. Okay. In any area, we will do that, and then we will resubmit to the ministry. For so those, those are all the possibilities could happen. Okay. But I think in, in regardless, our process will continue uh, for, for the budget approval at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Good questions. Um, any other questions here in person? Uh, I don't see any questions hands up online. I saw one from... Um, it, it was there, but disappeared from oh. Trustee Green. Yeah. Disappeared. Um, so, I uh, see. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, okay, Mr. Chair. I, uh, uh, the question that I uh, was going to ask, actually, you uh, provide some clarification there, and then Jazz Paul kind of, um, you know, kind of get into it a little bit deeper. So, I, I'm, I'm good. So, just was looking to make sure that there's the same process that we have used year over year, that that's a process we were going to be following in terms of. Uh, whatever we don't uh, we don't support in terms of the business case and how we we will continue to uh, uh, request ministry approval to uh, ensure that we can do those um, so thank you okay thank you very much uh, Mr. Green. okay seeing no other questions so all those in receipt of this uh, report uh, okay, so pass. So we're now uh, through our staff reports, and there's no items for communication. There's no trustee motions for considerations. There's no notices of motions. So we're going to go to adjournment. I see Trustee Davies that puts that on the floor, seconded by uh, Trustee uh, Joe Hall. All those in favor? Meetings adjourned.